Here are the solutions to the exercises in Chapter 8. Firstly, the average function. OK, so here's the start of the function. Now, the very first thing we have to do is test whether they supplied any parameters at all. Now, the easiest way to do that is test whether dollar hash or dollar pound is equal to zero. And if it is equal to zero, then we can simply echo out zero. That's being our made up answer for the average of no numbers at all and then return. Now, if we made it past here, then they must have supplied some parameters at all. So let's set up a variable into which we're going to accumulate the total of all the numbers, because remember the average is the total of all the numbers divided by how many numbers there are. And then we'll use a for loop to run through each of the parameters that they have supplied. Remember that that is actually short for writing that. and we're not going to actually do that because we don't need to, but that's what it would be. So this will loop once through each of the parameters, and the variable i will take the value $1, and then it will take the value $2, and so on, through each one. And then we use expr to add that parameter into the total. And then, of course, we put the value back in there, into total. So once we go through that entire loop, the variable called total will contain the sum of all the command line parameters. So then all we have to do is call expr and ask it for the sum divided by how many numbers there actually were. And no echoing is actually necessary because the expr program will indeed echo that information out itself to the screen. And then I'm just going to test it here. Notice the use of the back quotes here, average of 4, 8 and 21 and then We'll just do three different ones. Notice the third one will test the case where we don't specify any parameters at all. So let's run that and find out. It should work. The average of 4, 8 and 21 is 11. And that is correct if you do your mental arithmetic. And the second one, the average of 4 and 14 is 9. Well, that's pretty obvious. And then the average of nothing is 0. So that case is working as well. How did you go? Well, it is a reasonably tricky one because you do have to have a fairly good understanding of function parameters. You have to be able to use the dollar hash. You have to be able to use this for loop construct. And, of course, you have to be able to sum some variables. So there's a fair bit to it. The course project is actually slightly easier in terms of understanding, but there's a bit more work involved. So let's go and have a look at that now. So let's have a look at the changes now to the contacts database program. Here's a little pause function. Now you've seen the pause function already so I've just copied and pasted it in here. Then we have the yes no function which again you've already seen before so I'll just scroll all the way over that. Now we have the create function which will create records for our database. Now remember I actually was modifying, I asked you to modify the functionality of the creation process because I want two questions to be asked. The first is after they enter some details about a record, I want you to confirm with them that the details that they entered are correct. And once we finally make it through that, you need to ask them another question as to whether they wish to enter any more records. So it sounds like we're actually going to need two loops, a loop within a loop. So let's have a look at that. So we'll loop until the user is sick of entering records. And then an inner loop, we're going to loop until the user is satisfied with one individual record. So now we're going to read in the contact details from the keyboard. Please enter the following details and then confirm. And it's the confirm part that's actually new. So we can tell them you've entered the following contact details and all that's fairly straightforward. And then ask them if these details are correct using the yes no function. So here we go. If are these details correct? Now if they answer yes to that then we can simply write those details out to the file and break. Otherwise, well, we hit the done, which is the bottom of the loop. It's the bottom of the inner loop, so we go back to, where is it, here again, and ask them to re-enter the details again. So we keep going around here until they say that these details are correct, at which point we break out and we get down to here. So we successfully entered a record now we ask them if they want to enter another record. So we say, do you want to create another record? And if they say no, or in other words, if this yes-no program returns false, then 
we will break out of the outer loop. So that's reasonably sophisticated in the sense that there is a loop within a loop. But that's the only really tricky part about it. Next we have the do view part which will just view the contents of the file which is fairly straightforward. It's just the code that we had before put inside a function and we've seen all that before and then the search function does actually nothing at all except a simple echo, the same with the delete function and then we finally get down to the main code. Now this bit we've already seen before and, as, and we've seen this before as well and finally the only difference is when we get to these parts here. Now this code is now looking very simple because we either do a do create, a do view, a do search or a do delete and that's all we do. And then notice the the queue options, do you really wish to exit, is the question that we ask. We feed that to the yes no program and if they return yes then we exit. Now if they don't return yes then we don't do anything at all. So in other words we drop out of the end of the case statement, do our little pause which is the new thing that we just added and then go back around the loop again. So it's, uh, there's a lot of new code there but it's not particularly tricky. It will be new to you, very new to you if you've never used functions before but if you have used functions before it should be fairly obvious how it's all working. If it's not obvious then I suggest that you uh, spend some time examining the code, go back and look at all the examples that I described for you and some of the case studies and exercises that we did earlier and keep studying it until you actually fully understand it because it, it has been fully explained. Good luck with that and I will see you in the next chapter.